up on the lift. Yeah, we have, uh, I know we've been very slack lately on getting videos out. Uh, hopefully we're going to change that. But we have been super busy. Uh, been riding a lot of bikes too. Uh, spending some time on two wheels, but uh, we've been doing a lot of stuff down here that we just got lazy and sorry and did not film. We did a Toyota, there an was, engine swap on a Toyota. I was gonna say, there was a whole Toyota that got done in yeah. maybe five or minutes or so got of filming. Got a little bit of that. Uh, Y'all didn't see it, but we had to go back and pick up the prism van. The uh, transmission came out of it, and that is something that I, I, t I really take total blame for that. We put a 700R4 in it that had uh, like 3,000 miles on it. They've never been really my uh, most favorite transmission, but I decided to put it in there because uh, Jake had said something about overdrive, so I said, well, we'll put one in here and make it overdrive, and it, it came out. Uh, nobody did anything wrong. The TV cable got out of adjustment a couple times, and it was just it just... It just wasn't the right thing to do. So we got it back in the shop. Me and Seth put a Turbo 400 in it. Does so much better. Uh, it's going to be a whole lot more dependable with that. Y'all didn't see that, so we did that. Uh, we've taken the transmission back out of Ivan's truck again. Got it at the transmission shop. We just, we've done a lot of stuff and just been, for lack of a better term, sorry as far as family. <laughs> right. But we are going to get better with that. It's, it's crazy. I was telling Seth, it's crazy for us to have worked so hard to get the channel to where it is and not continue to do it. So we're definitely going to do it because we've got a lot of stuff that we want to do. But right now, we are getting ready to test fit a spring on my van because I'm going to lower it down. And I don't know if we're going to put two and a half inch springs on it or four inch springs. We've got one two and a half inch spring here. So we're going to test fit it. And if it will work, that's what we're going to do because uh, I've decided to sell this van. It's nothing wrong with it. I like it. But if y'all been following the channel and watching, y'all know how much I miss Timothy, my other van that I sold. I wish I would have never gotten rid of it. So I want to build another van like that. So I'm going to sell this van. But we're going to lower it down because Seth has been invited to have his van at the Glory Days show in two weeks. And we're going to use this van to tow his van up there. And I think it, it's just going to do a lot better sitting down lower with smaller tires on it. It's going to get the gear ratio better. And I think that it'll be more appealing to a larger uh, customer base that would want to buy it if it's sitting low instead of jacked way up like this. The, the biggest reason I really did it like this was just to draw attention to the van and for the swim shop and the channel. But it's... Uh, it's a good van. It's just for what we use. It's just, it's really too big and camping in it. Uh, it's just, it can sometimes it's aggravating getting in and out of it being set, jacked up so high. So yeah, we're you were talking about how you'd rather have the pop top and the shorter wheelbase rather than the extended wheelbase and extra space and low top. So exactly. that's another. Yeah. And I like this. Don't get me wrong. This is, this is awesome. I, I like it. There's, there's, it was not just like, I hate this van. I'm going to get rid of it. I, I've been wrestling with this for a while, whether to get rid of right. it or not. But, uh, I've decided to sell it. Uh, Stan, the guy that bought Timothy sent me a video of it not long ago and it just, it got you thinking, didn't it? <laughs> it was the deciding factor for me. So I'm going to build another high top as soon as I find one. Uh, but right now we're going to lower this thing down. We're going to test fit a spring and see which ones to go with. Yeah. And uh, we're going to lower it down and probably put 33-inch tires on it and get it looking. Still look four-wheel drive and mean looking, but uh, it's going to get uh, appealed to that uh, a larger older market. customer base in the age range as I am. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, women. They'll be able to get in and out of it a lot easier. So. Yeah. Well, which side? We hadn't even decided which side. Uh, I think we're going to go to the uh, driver's side. Yeah, there's more room, less... Yeah. We not just, having to deal with all that. Yeah, and all, all we're going to do, we're just going to pull this spring out, throw that other spring in there, set it down. It's not really going to give us a, uh, an a accurate. definite, but it'll give us an idea if we can go with those springs or go with the uh, the four-inch springs. Yeah, so. so unbolt here, unbolt there, unbolt there, support the axle, and then probably unbolt the shock just in case so it don't collapse at all. I think it's... Oh, we're probably all right. We probably won't even unbolt the shock then. Cool. And... uh. We'll stick it on there and see see what it looks like. Uh, stick the 33 inch tire on there and uh, see if we need to order one more two and a half inch spring or set of four inch springs. And just so you're curious, still two wheel drive. There is 
350 power. What transmission is this again? It's a. This is a turbo 400. That's right. Which, I thought it was a four, like 480 or no, something. No, this but. is a turbo 400, which this van came with a turbo 400 1990, and that's what we're going to go back uh, with. It. Matter of fact, the turbo 400 that we rebuilt ready for this is the one we put in the prison van. Yeah, so we, we had it sitting there ready to go. go. Uh, and Jake, he had some. He, he had his son's birthday party, a camping trip planned. He had several the things planned. Congregation is coming up. That's right. Yeah. This thing we so we got it back in here. We got it in here. Went and picked it up Thursday. Uh, Thursday night when we got back, we got the transmission 700R4 out, and we worked on it all day. Friday Ooh. got the 400 back in it. And drove it down the road, did a test drive, and we've been tweaking on it and test driving. And it is, we hooked the uh, motorcycle trailer up to it yesterday with both of our bikes on it and did a test run, run 70, 75 miles an hour down the highway. Just way better. I ought to have my butt kicked for not doing it in the, uh, like that in the first place. So, uh, well, is what it is, was what it was now. Well, we're going to get this spring out and start testing some stuff. And if anybody is interested in this van, y'all hit up uh, our email, uh, theswimshop 4 x 4 at gmail.com. And we're going to be kind of updating on the van and everything. Like we said, getting it ready for hauling to uh, Pennsylvania up in Pittsburgh. And that is one thing that I'm super, super excited about. Um, just on a whim, I emailed the Glory Day show, just hoping to get a booth to sell some artwork and uh you know possibly bring the band up there maybe park it in a parking lot in the corner or something like that and uh through the email they went on some social media stuff and, and saw the van and i told them a little bit about it and they were like well we love it we want you to be the uh centerpiece ve uh, vehicle to all the invited builders so uh my vehicle the van will be the only vehicle indoors uh around the invited motorcycle builders so that is super, super exciting. Uh, it's super big for the swim shop. It's it's great, uh, honored as far as the artwork and stuff on the van. And Dad and I were talking, I think we're going to take y'all through more of the artwork and stuff on the van and things like that, a little deeper we look. On this channel, y'all know more of the running gear behind it and uh, more of the more mechanical side. But y'all check out my uh, art channel and YouTube and Instagram and all that good stuff. Um, and we'll be taking you all through that too. And of course, it's going to be documenting everything to Pennsylvania. The road trip, the you know, hope it goes good. The good, the bad, the ugly. But y'all know yeah. how it is when we uh, we hit the road. We're just flying by the seat of our pants and fingers yeah, we, crossed. And I think this thing, we've, we've towed the van with it like this before. But going on a trip like that, I think it's just going to be a lot better with it sitting down lower. And uh that center gravity lower, but yeah. And then we're going to clean this dadgum shop up. Y'all probably Yo. won't see it, but we are going <laughs> to clean this shop up. Yeah, yeah. But that's a, wor a dirty shop's a working shop. That's what I've always heard. But yet again, you go down to Prism, you go down to Prism Supply and they completely an blow that theory out of the water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing when you go in somewhere like that and you see how organized and clean they are and then you have to come back to this crap yeah well gonna change Joe. gonna change yeah that's it's just our style i guess this may not happen uh -oh. oh golly <laughs> about wrap my glove up in this dead man that's power steering I think we either got what, a line loose or something, or uh, I can't see it's so dark. Hey. After what happened with Prism, the box could be busted. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> y'all go back and uh, speaking of we're talking a lot about the Prism van in this video, y'all go back and check out the delivery of the first time delivery of the Prism van show up everything was cool and all of a sudden out of nowhere a steering box just decided to crack yeah which was the right, craziest right here let's it, see right here on that steering box it had a hairline crack it just when jake was parking it to do the video he turned the wheel and it went 
yeah. shot fully. And it was just a hairline crack right there. I've never seen one do that. Never seen it. So y'all check that out. Had a road trip down there. Uh, Ivan and I, we, we started wrenching in the parking lot while he went and got a new one. It, it's pretty exciting and kind of hairy time there, but we got it done, got it right. And... It wasn't exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and just so y'all know, uh, if you don't know about our kits, we do offer these kits. Y'all check out the website uh, where y'all can kind of fill out a a application and describe your van and we get back with you. In fact, you talk straight to dad here and uh, we yep. can get you a kit for your G-Series van and we make it all to square body uh, configuration. So that's basically a two inch square body spring. These, these are, are four six, inch. No, these, six are, inch. these are six inch square body springs. Yeah. This is a Dana 60... Uh, square body front differential and this differential will be coming out uh i'm going to keep this differential for my uh next build because we're putting 33s on here and it just with 33 inch tires it does not need a dana 60 and honestly they're getting too hard to find i'm not gonna look for another i'm keeping this that's one that's right so we're putting an eight lug 10 bolt back in here which will be plenty uh for this van matter of fact Seth's van has got a 10 bolt in it with 37s and it does just, so fine, just so. fine and plus the 10 bolt we got matches the rear end exactly it's gear ratio yeah. so we won't have to change this match. is uh the rear end is geared 373 this front differential is geared 410 so when we were going to do the four-wheel drive conversion on it i was going to have to change the rear differential to uh match it up and it really needs to be lower with these size tires but once we put the 33s on it with the 370 it'll, it'll be it'll be perfect there's a uh, 373s be. in mine i hit the highway all the time you know it goes, oh yeah i mean it, it does is, absolutely perfect i've towed a little bit with it before this has had 373s in it since day one and right, i yeah. have towed the motorcycles i've towed the car trailer with other vans on it and it 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 don't get me wrong it knows it's back there and it puts a load on it, but it does it. So once this thing drops down to a 33 inch tire, it's going to do, it'll be just fine. So. Yeah. There's plenty of mountains on the way to, uh, Pittsburgh from what I understand the route we got to take. Yeah. I don't, but I don't think it's, I, I was trying to think about when we used to race up there. I didn't remember cro crossing a lot of big mountains cause it seemed like if I, and I may be wrong, it's more to the east coast, so I think we're okay. on the eastern side of the mountain range, but basically. But Might be able to dodge a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we, okay. we, we don't know. We'll see when we go. So. It don't yeah. matter. We're going either way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is not going to work. Uh-oh. You got the... Oh, you got to have a, a reverse yeah. of what you have there. I got to Y'all through this just a little bit, and we got a shackle flip on the rear. Once it goes down, we'll probably undo the shackle flip, and it'll be just blocks on the rear as a lift, but smile. Yeah, it, and we may. Yeah, it'll probably be uh, actually probably just doing getting rid of the shackle flip, and those blocks are that size block. We'll have to get a different block because when we did the shackle flip. It swings the front differential uh, forward, so we made a block with an offset pin. So, uh, well, do you think may, it might be where we take them blocks out and the shackle flip alone be okay? It might have to come up with some shims to get it absolutely level. What do you think? Uh, well, it could be. It's still gonna have the pin. You know, we would still have to do something. Oh right, right, right. Because right. the block has got the offset pin in it. But, Correct. Uh, we'll figure it out. Nice, look at that. Machine made, all fall out. Ooh. And we like the crossover pipes if we can get them. It's a little more space than like a header or something coming down and being in the way. I've got manifolds on mine. And it's kind of the same thing. Nice. Well, this spring is ready. To come out. Do we have bushings in the spring? No, we do no, not. Hey, okay. and this is something too. If you, uh, this is something too. If you get one of our kits and you uh, decide you did, say you got it and you put a four inch on it and you wanted to go six inch or something, this right here shows you how easy it is. You just take the springs out, take the four inch springs or whatever out and put whatever you want back in there. It's a direct bolt in. You get any kit for a square body and it'll bolt right in. 
You got it or I need to put this down? Uh, Here, I can put it. Maybe. I don't have any gloves. Uh, Let me put on these welding gloves real quick. And for those little pads, we just put those on there to kind of level it up and get just a tad bit more out of it. I can't remember why we put these I remember on there. Why. why is that? Because <clears throat> when I lifted mine up, uh, your band was just a little bit higher. And I didn't like that, so I wanted to go. Oh, high. that's right. <laughs> so you, yeah, he had to be high. Oh. <laughs> See, that's uh, that's what it's like working here. I th I finally get something cool, something. He gets a little jealous, and he's got to just go that that extra inch, that little bit more. Yeah. That little bit more. Yeah, yeah, and it was. We could pull them. We could pull them up, and like this would be you, and I'd be like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but well hey look let me tell you it doesn't matter how high you were mine still turned the front tires <laughs> 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 but i can't i can't again i can't brag because he helped me get everything up in there and got it run yeah all right now y'all check out heavy in the holler it's gonna be coming up next year they're talking about redoing the date, but y'all follow really renegade vans. I did not know that. Okay. So we got to get this pin out, this pin, and then put these this block on there just temporarily and switch the bushings out. And do that, and then, uh, yeah. All right. I'll help you do that real quick. All right. Got some things switched over. He just got the front. Kind of pry it up in there. I'll try to get the rear shackles right now. Ooh, I hope that's shot. Oh I know. I just saw it compress. Oh. Might have to loosen the top a little bit. Yeah, the pushing did. Didn't like going in these springs too much. Come on. swing the shackle over so we got to take it back out anyway that's true all right well i'm gonna put the bolt right or the nut right there this is where our issue is gonna come in is trying to get it back over lower the axle some itself all right here i'm gonna stop recording again so we can get it both get it in there all right after a little bit of uh wrestling to get this thing in here it is in being that all this was still bolted up and higher and everything like that I had to kind of swing some stuff over and wrestle it in there but yeah it's probably gonna push the wheels over this way so i'm gonna unlock the steering wheel with, with this bar here mm -hmm. i don't want to flatten it out so If y'all remember, these were the wheels and tires that were mocking up on the prism van before 
the BFGs and steel wheels were done. So y'all probably seen these before. Uh, that's significantly lower already, <laughs> just hanging down. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. But now we'll be able to kind of test, and it's kind of good because it with this i assume it's going to kind of simulate a flex too being that all the weight will be on here once we get it on the ground i'm going to crank it up so when it sits down the power steering will help push that thing so it won't be so hard okay i know it's going to try to push the steering over gotcha <laughs> Like I was saying, it's going to kind of simulate get flexing for parking lots and pulling in places and or if we got to trim anything here, but I doubt we will. All right, all three other ones that make contact. Grouping. There it goes. Might have to keep a watch on that. I'm gonna try to turn the wheel back and forth. Yeah. We bottomed out. Oh, we got a little bit of room, not a lot. Got a little. Got a little. Might have to get some shots. I don't know. Maybe turn the wheel, see what happens. He had trimmed it in the yeah. first place, so I think you got well, plenty. Well, it's going to go back, too, when the shackle's going to push back. Right, the shackle is pretty straight up and down. Once the other side's done, it will lower just a little bit, and the shackle will flip back. But even then... you'll be ordering a two-inch spring from Summit Racing tonight. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. I think that's going to be a good hole. Yeah, it looks. Size, yeah. Still yeah. plenty of fender well room. Like I said, I think even if it goes down a little bit, it was Yeah, it's probably going to. And it's probably... going to, like you say, swing back. Yeah, and it may go down a little bit more. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I like it. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. I like it too. Um... I believe that'll be good. I think that's the way to go. I guess undo it all, get it, or if, if you order it, when do you say you, you kind of looked at and calculated? When do you say that spring would be here? It's Monday Probably now. Thursday. Thursday. Maybe. Let me go up there and order it real quick. All right, cool deal. Yeah, we'll, it'll uh, give a shipping date, so let me go see. Yeah, it may be. It, it might be that we keep it like this on the lift for a minute until that other one that because it'd be ridiculous to undo it just for yeah, one day. I, I mean, don't really know anywhere I need to drive it to. Uh, we got my van, we got the suburban, we got the prison van still here. Yeah, we're still gonna put miles on the prison van, test driving it. So I don't know, yeah, might... I'm gonna try to put as many miles on it and be sure when we take it back. So but you, <laughs> we were. We were riding to lunch today, and the Turbo 400, the Turbo 400s, they have like a little kick down switch that you put on the pedal, and you know just been testing it out. And we were in the prison van. He just looked over. He said, "You watch this," and he nailed it. And we were going. We went from like 30 to 50 mile an hour oh, no, pulling a hill. We were, we were probably running 60 and jumped up to like 112. Oh, you're th yeah, right, right. <laughs> But that thing, it sound, I told him, it sounded like some 1970s, like, supercar like chase yeah, or like something. It sounded like those old uh, highway patrol cars with the four barrel. <laughs> yeah, it, got, it, 
it was moving pretty good. So, yeah, we don't want to... That's the thing. If something happens, you've always said this. If something happens, we want it to happen here. We don't want to... You don't want to build something and then baby it and then give it to somebody and they go and start romping on it, tearing it up, and then go, well, darn, this thing just fell like out. Like prison van. Right, right, yeah. Well, that was all good when it left. You know, that was... Yeah, I think that was a fluke thing. I've never been a fan of seven hundred R fours. Jake Hines is the most understanding and laid back guy when it comes to that, and I am so thankful. But he, he, the thing about it is he gets it. Yeah, he's built custom bikes for so long. He he understands. He even told me that day when it, when it messed up on it. He said, "Man, that's what I tell everybody all the time. Custom bikes means custom problems." So. So, he gets it 100%. We adopted that a little bit. Custom vans mean custom problems. So. All right, then we'll go up here and order a spring. All right, let's order a spring, get this thing lowered down, and ready to uh, eat up some miles all the way to Pittsburgh hauling a van for a show. Move this transmission stand. I don't know if he'll get that transfer case or not. He's leaning pretty good. <laughs> that looks crazy. Oh, I bet it's gonna look awesome from this side though. Little's up front and big's out back. Whoa! <laughs> That's great, it looks like a skateboard now. weight is off of that tire and that open differential get a run at it Okay, officially day two. Got the shop cleaned up yesterday a little bit. And I guess we're gonna be what? Doing a unshackle flip back to stock and taking these blocks out. Yeah, what, what we're doing, uh, ordered the spring yesterday. We had one two and a half inch spring here so we needed one more. Uh, so I got some. It's coming and it's going to be here tomorrow. Oh, we were just going to wait till it got here. <clears throat> but uh, as y'all know, this is my daily driver. So I've got to have it. So what we decided to do was go on and get everything done except the one spring because we've got to take the prism van back to Jake probably tomorrow. So we're gonna use, we need this to do that. Uh, he has gone to St. Louis uh, doing a My Garage series. So if y'all have not seen any of those, y'all go to Prism Supply YouTube channel and check out his My Garage series. It's a, it's awesome. He goes around all over the country and checks out people's garages and interviews them and just, uh, it, it's cool to see some of the people's garage. I wish I could do the same thing. He had said something about coming and doing ours, but we're, uh, we're not going to allow that. <laughs> uh, but he did do a, we did do, he did do one where we did a walk around where we did, uh, delivered. So y'all go check that out. But uh, what we're doing now, we're lowering the rear back. And if y'all remember how we did this particular one, it's pretty easy when you, when you raise them this way to go back. We just did a shackle flip at the back, which what that does is it pivots this, pivots everything forward so you have to reposition the axle back so what we did on it just going over kind of how we did this we made these blocks that's got an offset pin in it so in other words what what i mean by that is you've got the pin setting in the axle here in the center but you can see we re-drilled this and moved it back so that repositions the axle in the housing 
And so we drilled this hole. This is where the original center pin would be, but what that would do is get the axle forward. So all we're gonna do, I think what we can do once we lower it down, we can reverse the shackle flip and probably get by with like maybe a two inch block in the back to settle it up, level it up. So that's what we're doing now in theory. We hope it all works out. <laughs> we won't know until we see. Just got the rear of the springs unbolted. And see, all we did was we just turned this shackle around and flipped it down. So now what we'll do is, if it works right, want to cooperate. These can be a little tricky, especially if they've been on there a while, but being that these have been taken off one time before and done, and they're still gonna put up a fight. <laughs> So we had it on there like that. So what we'll do is we'll flip it around like this, but we'll put it up, up in here instead of down. And the I might have to get, you got your flashlight on you. Got my pants on, don't I? Yeah, you do. All right, yeah, let's go right here. Now y'all can see. Yeah, see, we had it. We're going to do it right. <laughs> like this. Right. So now we're flipping it around and it'll be up in here like that. And the spring will go up here. Cool. That's what, that's, that's what we talk about. When, that's what it is when we talk about a shackle flip. And it'll gain you, it'll gain really. About like four inches or so. Nah, it's really five. probably closer to five inches of lift. Uh, it's perfectly fine. It, we, we've done, golly, just about all of them like that. Mm -hmm. And it does just fine. Yeah, uh, see, that's what we had before. Yeah. It's like, so if we can get it out. And we like to show you all this because we don't really offer anything. That's just one of the ways we like to lift the rear because got the front covered with the kit and everything but we like to kind of show this as much as possible is just a and this is this is not the only way to lift it in the back this is just one uh inexpensive way to do it that that, that works yep. and uh, like i said uh, it's the way your van's done uh it's the way it's a way we, I think we've done every one of them like that and y'all seen this one hauling cars hauling trailer hauling all kinds of stuff and it don't rides good yeah i'm sure those threads will be just fine oh yeah it's no problem whatsoever but this is back the way it was stock yeah <laughs> All right, now I guess we'll lower the whole entire van back down, get those back in the location real quick. Oh, you can swing look. it up like that right yonder and see if we can get them in there. All right, I'm going to put it down and we'll do that. You know what? We might have been better off to put it on here first. First and then, and then put okay. it up in there. Yeah. No big deal. Unless it'll swing up. Because I don't know if the... Yeah, I think we might have to take it out and bolt it on there first. Yeah. MBD. Well, one of the challenges down here trying to document stuff is now with the two of us. Uh, I got to put this down to really help. So a lot, some action might be missed, but along with the action might be a few cuss words that might be missed as well so that's not too bad oh, yeah. all right so here's the blocks that were made the lift blocks originally for the rear of the van and you can see what we were talking about with these offset pins and holes there it is up here and there it is back here and like we said that just helps slide the axle in the correct position 
when you uh, do the shackle flip and get it positioned right in the wheel well. Well, now that we're going back, the rear end's gonna be swinging backwards and we don't need it to do none of this. So I think what we're gonna do is just try to re-drill this hole. We've got some pretty good support in there, but I think this material will be thick enough and deep enough by the time we drill that hole. So we just gotta go right over that. Probably right about here. We'll guesstimate it. We'll use the icrometer. Yeah, let me get it right over here. <laughs> Definitely like precision in the swim shot. So, if my calculations are correct, that's about. No, that's not about. That's exactly where it needs to be. There's. It's dead on. I mean. You want to double check it with the uh, micro tools and stuff? Yep. Double checked. That was good. That's dang good. Oh my gosh. Why would you even need micrometers and all that? <laughs> what size hole does this need to be? I'll get one in the drill. Uh. Probably pretty close to that size. Of All course, right, you want to start off small. Yeah, I'll size it up. Got our handy dandy drill boxes where the machine shop side of everything. Got all types of fun stuff in here. So, don't need to tap it, but we got them if we need it. Thread count up here. Other stuff, extra dinghickies from the drill. On the right one. Got the holes re drilled. Lower it down. I'm gonna have to do some muscling around. I might have to actually put this down again. Oh, I think that's gonna do the trick. Pivot in the end a little bit. I mean, here, I can. Uh, I can at least do this right here. Like a glove. This one's still got a ways to go. Ready? Now I see you got some shocks back here. Are these ones that are going to have to be put on or are they too long? Uh, this is going to be close. I'm pretty sure those are going to be way too long. These are a couple inches shorter. So uh, I think we might can make them work. We, we'll, we'll see once we get it all bolted up. There's that mountain location and there's that. But I mean, still. Got to be compressed some, but. Yeah, and these are my favorite choice of new bolts, but I mean, what they use. What would you rather have? Ones like on mine where they go from the bottom yeah. to the top plate rather than the top to the bottom plate? Yeah, but I mean, really, I don't know that it... I mean, what it ties it down the oh, same way. It does the same job. Yeah, I wish we had some a little bit bigger. This is what we've got. They've been fine. So far, there. Yeah, I think remember when we, when we did this, we didn't have any U bolts here, and I think I went online and Advance Auto was showing these, just like a universal. Yeah. 
you bought and it was one of those things we was like well we'll just get these for now and replace them later well later never came never, never came because they've been working so well if it ain't broke don't fix it all right well there you have it yeah we'll sit it down it's gonna look a little weird still got one six inch spring on the front so but we wanted to go on and get what we could have done to Yep, so there's a shackle reverse back to stock uh, block still on it uh, shorter shocks and and we may still we won't know really if we're going to have to adjust the rear until the other spring gets here and we sit it down we think we'll be, we'll be close. Good day, everything's falling apart. I don't think that shackle flipped. What happened? I don't know, I guess we'll have to persuade it to flip. Neither one of them flipped. Really? Oh, well, might just have to get them in the correct position first. Or sitting it on the ground. Gosh. Shot this one. Yeah. Um, damn, I wonder why that is. That's not good. Alright, y'all didn't see it, but actually the shackle, it was drooping down, and we had to actually flip it uh, to get it up in there, but we just got it done. And now she's sitting on the ground. You can still tell, like we said, six inch up front on this side. And everything back to somewhat normal, still lifted, obviously, but looks good. Shocks are pretty, still pretty long. We still may have to find a shorter shock. They gotcha. could do for now, but. But heck yeah. Okay, so the van is lowered down. We've been riding it around, uh, actually towed a trailer with it, uh, towed the Prism van back down to Charlotte, all that good stuff. Everything works out, rides and drives great. But now we're getting ready for uh, glory days. So we gotta take the bed out, we're gonna put the seat back in it, we're gonna clean some things up. We're gonna take a spare tire, Jack, uh, spare tire for the van, all that, I mean, we're gonna take we're going to take everything we need and hope we don't need it. That's it. Yeah. If y'all remember, y'all go back and watch the uh, Kentucky trip. We're going to kind of have it the same setup as we had it on there. We had all our tools, everything in the back, just behind the third seat there. So we'll, uh, we're and just going to get this I, thing comfortable. I don't know if I've told y'all. Did I say anything about possibly getting rid of this? Yeah. Yeah. You've talked about selling it and, okay. and stuff like as that. Y'all know I want to build me another van like Timothy, a raised roof. So I'm, bouncing around the idea of getting rid of this so if y'all anybody's interested hit us up and let us know if we don't sell it we're just gonna keep it for the swim shop work van so yeah undecided right now. but right now the bedding's coming out and like i said we're just decking this thing out uh i did a few more things on my van we'll go over that later i got some glass etching done and uh this week we're actually it's monday today's monday and this week we're leaving thursday morning first thing heading up to pittsburgh so that way because my van if i hadn't mentioned it before my van is the first thing that's got to be in the building and they're going to put all the invited builder bikes around it so you know i've got to be the first one in there that way they can have everything set up how they like it but getting there first is kind of cool because you'll get to see the whole thing come together it's kind of stressful too yeah <laughs> Moving on to the trailer. Yeah, it's gonna grease all the grease all the wheel bearings. We got one light we need to fix. Yeah, it's on that side. This side's yeah. okay, but went to old Hobo Freight. Brand new lights. Yeah, they'll be too off in a week. <laughs> yeah, we'll hit something we'll or some big old military. 
Well, the axle's just flipped under there. <laughs> I'm sure some military tire will just obliterate one of them at some point. But show y'all the inside of the van. The much rooms in there, mattress out, or the platform out, middle seat. There you go. This trailer's cool, it's got built built-in tie-down. Dad always complains that they weren't put in at like a 45 or so, because every time you start tying down a vehicle, this wraps up and gets kind of bunched up on one side. But other than that, this trailer's been pretty good. You bought this thing brand new, didn't you? Yep. 92 or 93, I believe. I don't know if I can tell, but it was red at one point. Now it's a rusty brown, red-ish coloration. <laughs> uh, fenders were obliterated. I think y'all saw that. Y'all can go back and watch. I don't remember what episode or video it was but we were riding actually down to okay recycling i think to get some metal or drop off something and the fenders just had had enough so we ripped them off on the side of the highway to keep it from hitting somebody else and we uh we still hadn't figured nothing out yeah but they were they were in bad shape from years and years of more racing abuse yep so if we can figure that out he's been on facebook market and we cannot find any fenders so and we don't quite have enough material i'd love to make some like diamond plate fenders like that that way if a tire something wide enough or whatever needs to go up over the fenders it don't crush those thin little metal fenders or we had them where they could remove but eventually they just got bolted on well out of grease and i have never been able to load a grease gun right uh-oh <laughs> out of grease all right well do we need to call ethan he loaded the grease gun last time maybe i don't know all right we'll be back <laughs> <laughs> all right so dad ran to the parts store real quick y'all remember i uh I changed my pipes. I did have some zoomies on here, uh, but they were a little too rowdy, a little too rambunctious, and I changed my exhaust to something a little quieter. But uh, we cut the ends of those pipes with the blowtorch. But we got the plasma cutter, and I just did a little test piece, and I think it kind of matched with the rest of the theme of the van. I'm gonna cut these tips kind of rough because obviously, I mean, look at this thing. It, it's not perfect, and too clean of a. I say this rusty exhaust is clean. Too clean of an edge. It just don't look right to me. So, we're gonna put some Mad Max Fury Road uh, style exhaust on it, I guess, and finish it out. But let's see. Let me show y'all this. Got the compressor running for the plasma cutter, but I got. This glass etched, kind of hard to see on video, but there's a dragon on this side and one of my favorite characters of all time from Frank Frazetta, the Death Dealer. I got a uh, Foggy Mountain Van Club. Got the Van Club on the back. But now every piece of glass on the van, including the windshield with all the leaves, is finally etched. So. Every piece is done and tied in, but right quick, gonna get back to it on this exhaust and just do some fine little touches and clean this thing up and get it ready. Right, I'm gonna start with this side here. Got everything set up. And let's see if I can't magnetize this somewhere to the body or maybe behind me. All right, well, here goes nothing. Probably gonna make some big mistakes but that's the name of it
I didn't want it to come out super precise. Just something nasty to go along with the thing. This Dad just got back. I needed a little bit of power steering fluid, so I'm going to top that off here in a minute, but got the tips done. Very Mad Max, Fury Road style. If y'all haven't seen Fury Road or Furiosa, the brand new one, y'all yeah, go check it out. But obviously my van was completely inspired by that, but not bad. Got a little crazy with that cut, but you know, good put a story with it or something and make up something but that's that looks pretty cool matches the everything else eventually gonna have to put a patch panel or something there because that's that's pretty gnarly but no rust behind it falling out so not too concerned but gonna pop the hood add some power steering fluid and clean up the interior and I don't know, show van stuff, I guess. Y'all, those that have show cars and show vans or show bikes, you ride it, you clean it, you ride it, you clean it. That's the end of that video. It is uh, Wednesday, no, Tuesday. 
raining like crazy. We got to get ready tomorrow for Seth to go up to Pittsburgh to the Glory Day show. His van's going to be in. But we got uh, my van lowered down, leaf springs, everything's good. Uh, we've towed with it, uh, done good. We had a little hiccup on the transmission, but we changed the fluid, changed the filter. Perfect now, changed the modulator valve. So we feel good about pulling Seth's van up to Pittsburgh with it. And uh, we're going to document that whole thing. The Glory Day show is. Uh, Awesome bike show. Seth's van will be right smack dab in the middle of it around with all those bikes around it. So we're looking looking forward to that and I hope hope it'll be some good content for y'all. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Uh, nothing spectacular on this video. I still hope you enjoy it. And just as always, thank our sponsors, OK Recycling. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Renegade Tees that makes all of our t-shirts. Go check them out. Get some merch. Uh, we don't have a lot, but we got a little bit left on the website, so go check that out and uh, just keep on doing what you're doing and we'll keep doing what we're doing.